here today in George Square, Glasgow, regarding the Strathclyde Anti-Poll Tax Federation, and with us here we have the uh, President, Secretary, Secretary Tommy Sheridan. Well, Tommy, can you tell us how this uh, hunger protest, what, what it would actually do for the Federation and the people concerned? Really, Brian, the main reason we've convened this type of protest is twofold. One is to highlight something that's getting hidden in the press, and that is that people in the schemes of Easter House and Pollock and Govan are getting their benefits docked now for not paying the poll tax. They're getting 185 taken off them if they're single, 285 off them if they're in a couple. And what we're saying is that there is highly recognised poverty in Strathclyde. 40% of the population are living on or below the income support level of income. And therefore, what these docks are going to mean, what the deductions are going to mean, is forced hunger. It's going to mean single parents taking the choice about whether or not they feed themselves or feed the kids, whether they clothe themselves or clothe the kids. And it's that type of scandal that we're really trying to highlight here. And the only way we can do it is by coming onto the street like this, taking over a part of George's Square in the middle of culture city and showing that the, the real culture of Glasgow is getting hidden during all of these celebrations and we want people to know that it's a disgrace and it's taking place and the second reason we're doing it is because we want to put pressure on the council, Strathclyde Council. We all recognise that the Tories are the ones who are responsible for these deductions but it's the council who's implementing the deductions and it's a Labour council and what we are saying to that Labour council is for God's sake stand up with the people that put you into your position, stand up with people who can't afford to pay the poll tax, stand up with people who are facing these deductions and at the very least, if they're not going to stop deductions totally, which is what we would want, at the very least what we're asking them to do is to establish a special benefits hardship committee so that everybody who's threatened with a benefit deduction is referred to that hardship committee before a deduction is made. And even if the council couldn't even stop the deductions after they're referred, at least it would hold it up for several months, if no years, and it would stop the deductions being made. It would be a symbol of protest. So that's what this uh, protest is about. Yes. Well, I know myself. Well, I know myself, like say, I'm unemployed. I know what it's like to be on the hard line, right, the bread line. But at the same time, we have got to think of the single parents, as you were saying, and the kids. What chance really have these people got with the, the powers that be? Well, the fact of the matter is that the reason they've moved to the poll tax deductions for people's benefits is because they've been beat at everything else. You see that the sheriff officers are the people who have been given the authority to try and intimidate and harass people, single parents in particular, because that's what they're picking on first. Sending them intimidating letters, saying if you don't pay your poll tax within such a certain amount of time, we're going to come and visit you. And people, quite rightly, get frightened and get worried about it. But the problem is, is they're contacting the Federation, they're contacting their anti-poll tax union. And what's been happening in 19 different occasions where the sheriff officers have been out of people's houses, the sheriff officers have faced 200 demonstrators outside those houses and they've been sent on their way, they've been sent packing because working class people have stood together in a human wall of solidarity and said, no, we've, we've taken enough, we're not going to allow any more to take place and we're stopping these sheriff officers for conducting pendings and warrant sales. And what they've done now, of course, is because they can't get the money that way, they've now turned to the soft target. Soft target of taking half your money direct, so that you've got no say. You can't say whether you want that money taken off or no. Your civil liberties are getting removed for you, as well as your income support. Tommy, could you, could you actually tell me uh, what you really think we'll gain out of this hunger protest and uh, no, the outcome of it? Well, we're hoping, Brian, as I said, to highlight the scandal of benefit deductions, yeah, first of all. I mean, if we can get publicity to show people at large what's happening, then we'll have won, we'll have succeeded in something. But the main thing we're looking for here is to pressurise the council to say to them, look, don't dare the Tories dirty work any longer. At least make a stand against these deductions that are a disgrace. Now, we're going to be living in these tents here for seven days in the middle of George's Square. We're not going to be taking any food for seven days. We're only going to be taking uh, water over that uh, seven day period. Um, none of us have done it before. Um, none of us are looking forward to it, that's for sure. Because um, we're now 
well into your, tw your, 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 your first 24 hours, well into your second 24 hours. I mean, and already we're feeling uh, the, 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 the pains and you're feeling hungry and all the rest of it. But the point that we've made is that we're only doing this for seven days. If they get away with the benefit deductions and the social fund loans and all the rest of the stuff they're getting away with right now, then what you've got is families week after week facing similar type of pains in their stomachs, kids coming in and asking, is there a meal on the table rather than what's for dinner? You know, that type of thing. And so from that point of view, we think that this is a minimum weekend day to try and highlight the scandal of these deductions. And uh, so what will happen the following Wednesday then? What's happening is we're going to be here until Wednesday 4th of July. We're then appealing for people from Glasgow and through Strathclyde to come to the square, to come to the square for 11 o'clock next Wednesday in the morning, and then we're going to march to the regional council headquarters. They've got a full council meeting on. We've asked to be allowed to go in and speak to that full council meeting and really appeal to those councillors to have a heart, basically, uh, and to uh, accept our demands, to accept the proposals, to at least establish this hardship committee. So we're hoping that several hundred people throughout Strathclyde and, and, and Strathclyde will come ways, will, will march ways and show their opposition to the benefit deduction. Well, Linda, I believe it's your birthday. Today. Now we're speaking to Linda Thompson, who's part of the hunger, pro uh, hunger strike protest. I believe it's your birthday today, Linda. What age are you? Uh, I'm 21. So how are you coping with the conditions up to now? It's OK. It's not bad. I'm feeling a bit sick, but apart from that, it's no problem. It's easier than I thought it was going to be. And it's actually it's just uh, fluids you're taking? Uh, just water, that's it. So just water, nothing else. And do you think you'll last out to next Wednesday? Yep, no problem, I can do it, I'm sure. So you're, you really believe in the cause? Oh yeah. So do we. Thank you, Linda. Thanks. Well, Linda, what, what drove you to actually spend your birthday in a hunger protest? It's just that um, the people who the, the, that are on the income, income support are the poorest people anyway, and uh, if the deductions are made from their benefit, they're going to be, you know, much worse off. And it's a choice between paying your poll tax or feeding your children and eating yourself. Uh, so it's just to highlight to everyone else that that's why. I mean, that, that's the reason why it's a hunger protest and not just a sit-in or whatever. You've got to get across the, the how desperate the situation is. And uh, how how big do you believe your movement is now? I'd, it's grown all the time. I mean, when you're sitting in the stall, the people are coming up and they'll ask you things and they'll say, well, I was paying, but, you know, I'm not paying anymore and I've stopped. And pensioners are saying, you know, well, I paid it because I was frightened, but I'm sorry I did and I wish I hadn't. And they're all signing up and joining. I mean, it grows every time you're sitting there, every hour, there's more people coming along and joining joining in. I would you believe in uh, the media about uh, people actually having to contact money lenders and young young women having to go out in the street to actually make money to cover costs? Oh, I mean, I've heard personally of, of a few women who actually are married with children whose husbands don't have work and actually go out and work on the streets to pay the poll tax. I mean, and that's, that is what it's for. Uh, they actually say that they're there because they can't afford to pay the poll tax and that's why they've got to get the money from somewhere and that's what they end up doing. They're on the streets. I mean, there's... Oh, uh -huh. Totally, it's... Can say. I mean, it's so it's actually the working class being forced into an even further stage of poverty? I mean, it, if it carries on, I mean, we're going back centuries. I mean, the way it's going, I mean, everything is taken. I mean, the working class has just been stripped of everything, you know, that they've got. They've, they've got nothing as it is, and it's just all going. It's crumbling, just, you know, taking everything, nothing left. Well, Linda, thank you very much. We're all working class and we're all in the same boat. Thank you. This is Hugh Carroll, who is actually on hunger strike also. This is well the shape this morning. <laughs> this is Hugh Carroll, one of the hunger strikers in the George, George Square protests. Well, Hugh, how are you coping up to now? Well, I'm not hungry yet. I had a meal earlier on uh, yesterday morning before I started. That was the last thing I ate. And then all we've got here for supplies is uh, water. Uh, we get two vitamin tablets a day and a couple of spoonfuls of glucose, you know. <laughs> Plenty of sleep. <laughs> uh, but I think I'll, I'll probably feel the pains for the night, you know. I'm getting a bit of a headache at the moment, but uh, I'm, I, I get migraines anyway. I hope that will pass, you know. But I expect to be a wee bit more uh, knackered within the midweek, you know. For the weekend anyway. And uh, what, what area do you actually come from? I stay, in, uh, I stay up in Castle Milk in the Mitchell Hall Flats. 
I'd moved up there as a, I'm a student actually, you know, I'm unemployed at the moment, so I just finished my term. But I moved up there as a student because it was what, uh, cheaper housing, you know. And uh, I'd been in a private landlord previous to that, but I just couldn't afford the rents. You know, they'd been cutting back the housing benefit for students and all that. And I'd anticipated with the introduction of loans, you know, that I'm going to be worse off next year. I've actually left college for a year to try and get some work, because I can't even really afford to go back next week, uh, next year, you know. So, uh, I'm, I, well, that's the area I'm from, anyway. <laughs> Could you actually tell me what kind of burden the poll tax would, would have upon yourself? Well, basically I get about 34 quid a week on the dole, and I'm, I'm well off. Uh, and, uh, According to other people, you know, because uh, over 25 you get extra money. You know, young people under 25, you know, they'll get less money, they'll get the less chance of getting housing, that sort of thing. You know, so so a lot of people would see me as, as being better off, <laughs> you know, in, in that sense, being a bit older. But um, my rent it's, uh, itself is £104 a month, and I've got electricity and all that on top of that, you know, plus feed myself. And particularly the new changes around the income support, where you have to account for the, you, you looking for work, you know, so they expect you to make telephone calls, they expect you to have travelling expenses, you know, all to come out your dole money. And there's no way that I'll be able to cope with that, you know, and let a less than anyone under 25. So we, we, if they're expecting me to pay 185 my poll tax, then it's going to make a difference between uh, me having something to eat or me looking for a job or getting them 185 my poll tax. I just can't afford it at the end of the day. I'm, I'm bad enough off as it is. I'm not going to prepare to pay any, any merd, you know. So have you actually you actually had letters pressuring you to pay the poll tax, and what have you actually done about it? Well, not since I moved up to Castlemilk, I've not really had anything, you know. Uh, I've not had any warnings at all. Well, at my previous address, you know, they'd sent me out reminders and that, but I just ignored the reminders, and it'd be the same process if they sent anything up there. If it's a case that they you know, like they came up with a sheriff officer, then uh, what I'd do is immediately in contact with the Federation. Any pendings that they've tried in Glasgow so far have been a complete and utter failure and I don't think they would have any success in uh, Castle Milk. But obviously eventually, eventually with the powers that be they'll, they'll eventually suss you out. Well, they may well suss me out. I don't mind letting them know where I am, you know. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I don't mind letting them know that, because I'm not going to pay anyway, and I'm going to do everything in my power to stop them trying any, any pendings in my house and trying to arrest my benefits. You know, they, 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 I, I don't care if they know where I am, if they can locate me, it's not going to make any difference. And do you think you'll actually last out next Wednesday? Oh, aye. I, I go th about three days without eating anyway, you know. I mean, no, maybe not in a row, you know, but over the course of a week, I only, you know, I can only afford to feed myself about four days out of the seven anyway. You know, I mean, so we have Alan McCombs, another protester here in Hunger Street in George Square today. Alan, could I ask you, is there really going to be a gain from a hunger strike? I think there is going to be a gain, because already we've had quite a considerable amount of publicity of a tremendous support for the ordinary punters and I think by next Wednesday if we can sustain this hunger protest then by next Wednesday I think the regional council are going to be under a lot of pressure to do something about the benefit arrestments and particularly what we're calling for them today is to set up a hardship committee to examine each case one by one. That's great and I believe you're now going to make an announcement. Uh, an announcement? No. With a megaphone? Oh, uh, no, we're just going to use a megaphone to generate a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of noise, a bit of attention, attract a bit of attention to get more people to come over and make donations and sign the petition. Yeah. That's great, and we'll be listening in. Thank you. Right.
No benefit deductions. Don't carry out the dirty work on behalf of the Tories. And we call upon you, the people of Glasgow, to support this seven-day hunger strike by signing the petitions, by making a donation to the Strathclyde Anti-Poll Tax Federation. This is the Scottish Anti-Poll Tax Federation calling on you to support the seven-day hunger strike now taking place in George's Square and protest against benefit deductions. We are saying to Strathclyde Regional Council that by attacking people who are living in the depths of poverty and income support, you are driving tens of thousands of families in this region into destitution. And we are calling upon ordinary people to support the seven-day hunger strike in Georgie Square, to say no to benefit deductions, to sign a petition, to make a donation, and to tell Strathclyde Regional Council, stop carrying out the dirty work of the Tories. Stop carrying out benefit deductions and begin to stand up and represent the ordinary working class people of this city who elected you into power. Support the protest, sign the petition, make a donation. Now here we have Tommy Coyle, who's now going to make an announcement. He isn't part of one of the hunger strikers, but he's here to support the campaign. Uh, what age are you, Tony? Uh, 19. 19, so obviously you're up against the fellows that be, what's happening? Well that's it, uh, and uh, it's probably speaking for uh, many young people probably right throughout the whole of Glasgow, not just Glasgow, but not just even Scotland, the whole of Britain who are now faced with, uh, after working, faced with bills of 300, 400 pounds in excess, and uh, people on the door who just simply cannot afford to pay, as every single working class person knows. And what we're saying is enough is enough, you know, we've had enough of that, so we've no jobs, we've no money, we're in a uh, crappy, uh, crappy training schemes, you know, and what we're saying is uh, the time is to stand up against that, so obviously uh, to battle against the poll test, but to battle for a better future, uh, you know, as a whole, you know, a better future for young people and a better future for working class people. Like you say, well, you've been 19 year old and uh, you're unemployed, you're on the dole. I believe uh, your income is £34? Uh, yes. No, it's £26. No, sorry, £34. You're ready to put it So, £34 a week, how do you actually survive on that? Uh, you, what, you, you, what, I pay my mum, uh, I pay my mum 20, uh, I pay my mum, what, £10 dig money a week and therefore I have to live off £24, which what I have to, uh, uh, clothed myself and uh, you know where the hell does a young pe a young person find uh, a social life <laughs> on, uh, on, uh, what, on a pittance of just over uh, 20 pounds just over uh, 15 pounds or whatever you know just it's finding it impossible to survive impossible to live you know and uh, like young people your own age are they actually are they going to get up and really fight are they going to sit back and take it well this is it you know many young people sitting in the housing schemes right throughout the whole of Glasgow I mean uh, you know they want to fight back but they don't know how to fight with. And I think it's uh, definitely for the Scottish anti politics Federation and even the Youth Rights Campaign, who are doing a lot of campaign around Glasgow trying to get young people involved to fight against Thatcher and the poll tax and to fight for a better society. And you know, and it's up to the Youth Rights Campaign and it's up to, so we, we, what we want to do is we want to get to those young people, you know, get them off the streets rather than hanging about, smoking the dope, you know, drinking the wine, no future. We want to get them involved, get them organised. And you know, tell them you know the real enemy is stature, and let's say uh, you know let, let's get right in about her, you know, and the Tories. Okay, Antonio. Right. Best of luck. Cheers. Thank you. This is the Scottish Anti-Poll Tax Federation asking you to support the seven-day hunger strike, which has been called to oppose the benefit arrangements that's going to be carried out by Strathclyde Regional Council, we ask you to come up to the stall, sign the petition, join our demonstration on Wednesday and give a donation.
And here at the store we have uh, Paul Couchman, Couchman and uh, he's actually here for the uh, signatures against the anti-poll tax. And uh, well, Paul, can you give me some of your views on some of the people that's been coming to put their signature to the protest? Well, one of the things that's, that's very, very good is most of them are in trade unions. Um, you see there's a lot of lads from British Rail here signing up. Uh, we've had people from Nelgo, from UP, from the Transport in General, from the Teachers Unions, uh, from the ETU, virtually every union you can mention has been written down here. And that, that's one of the best things about it, is, you know, the unions. The unions are going to be very, very important if we're going to beat the poll tax. And I think the fact that most of the rank and file, like the membership of the trade unions is supporting us is very good. And uh, have, you had a bit, have, you, have, you ha have you had a good reception with people asking questions and maybe whatever? Yes, we've had a very, very good reception. People do want to know what's happening, but generally speaking, there's not a lot of questions. It's just, you know, well, just to support, just very good support. That's great, then. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. And as usual, our old Glasgow rain does it again. No matter where you go or what, it comes. Uh, Thomas McGee from Gathamock, Glasgow. Well, Thomas, how are you coping? Yeah, I'm coping quite well, considering I've never actually done this kind of thing before, but I believe that we've got to take a stance against what this government's actually done to the people now. If we don't do it, then the government's just going to walk all over us. Is this your son? This is my son, this is John. What age is John? Yeah, John's four. Is he going to be on the protest all week with you? Yeah, he'll be coming down to support us, aye. And uh, you're looking forward to next Wednesday? I'm ex aye, especially next Wednesday. <laughs> especially the march behind it all? Right, once it's aye, I'll we'll be looking forward to it. That's fine then, Thomas, thank you. Okay. And here we have Andy Lynch inside one of the tents, another one of the hunger strikers. Andy, can you tell me where you come from? Well, I'm originally from Drumchapel. I lived there 21 years and I, I moved down to England for six years and moved back here. Uh, but I couldn't find anywhere to live in Drumchapel because my man and dad moved to a, a smaller house and, I, and I'm from a nine of a family, so I had a bit of a problem. So I had to move on to, to like a place called Springboy in Glasgow, which is just around the corner of Shelton. And uh, like, get digs there. And it's, I have to pay, what, 40 quid a week, you know. It's a bit extortionate, you know. But at the moment, I'm looking for somewhere cheaper, you know. But I can't find anywhere now, because it seems as if Glasgow's, like, the in place now, and it's, like, 50 pound a week for everywhere where you go to. So, at the moment, I'm a wee bit like that now. So you can't actually get a house back in Drumchapel where you came from? I could, I could indeed, but... I would be offered one of the ones that would be really be fit to live in, you know. They're actually shutting down a lot of places in Drum Channel. Lots of streets and that, you know. It's become quite difficult and that. A lot of people are in the same problem down there. There's a lot of homelessness, people in Drum Channel. Like, sleeping in the bus shelters at night and that. Believe it or not, and it's a scheme, you know. So, just need to wait and see. I hope, hopefully something will turn up, but it's who you know and all, you know, to get into a place these days. So, um, above uh, actually having to pay your poll tax, that uh, they actually want you to accept houses that are inadequate. Yeah, that's right. At the moment, well, I'm, well, I'm unemployed, but I'm uh, on a, an ETE, a training scheme, you know. But I do that uh, down in Toll Cross, like YM. Uh, like, works, I work with handicapped people and all that, you know, and it's quite an enjoyable job. And like you get a wee bit of satisfaction with it, but you're only getting a tenner a week. And well, that's on top of your gyro. Now they want to deduct my, my poll tax for my benefit, which is going to make it increasingly difficult for us to, to live on. Because I've got to pay bus fares and all that as well, you know. Offer us £10 a week. You think you're, you know, a tenner a week's... You know, you're actually taking a, a wage cut, you know. We're taking on money these jobs, you know, because you've, you've got to pay for... Like dinner money and that, and bus fares, and then now the 
the poll tax has got to be taken off my benefit, so it's going to be, I'm actually worse off. I've got doing this, or a girl, but I just want to work, you know, you know, that's the idea, is getting out and working. So it doesn't matter which way you turn, it's a cutthroat catch-22 situation? Oh, definitely, definitely, absolutely. It's incredible. I'm not just the only one, there's millions of us like it. We're all poor and we're all as if Thatcher's just battering down on us, you know, making us suffer because we come from up here with our, the majority of labour and that, you know, the vast majority, you know, it's got it in for us, you could say. And do you eventually think the working class people will get themselves together and make the final stand? Without a doubt, I think so, aye. And I think it's happen happening and now, like, you can feel it happening. It's just a matter of time now. I would say like, within a couple of years, personally. A lot of people think differently. I can't see Labour changing it, because Labour are sort of a fancy new and all, you know, they're sort of a forgetting like, the trade unions and the, the working class and that. It just, to me, it seems as if Labour are actually becoming like the Tories. You know? OK, then, Andy Lynch, thank you very much and the best of luck. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And here in George Square again we have Andy Dick and our one of the protesters. Well Andy, I believe you're away to see your solicitor there. Yeah, I was hoping to get a legal aid to take this to the High Court. Uh, apparently it's been refused, but she wants some uh, further documents after this afternoon because she has got an appeal prepared ready to go out to Edinburgh. Uh, just it's when I leave here, that's where I'm going right away again. So your case is actually going through the courts now? Well, hopefully it's going through the courts, subject to getting legal aid out. We, won't have, we don't have the kind of money to, to pay QCs and counsel to appear in the High Court, but it'll need to be done through legal aid. So what does your, your case actually involve then? Well, actually, it's uh, against the DSS deducting any, any money from my benefit while appeal has been lodged and until it is heard. It's a, it's a post in actual justice. It's like being found guilty of, of something before you've, you've tried, you know, you're being penalised at this stage while you're still waiting to go to an appeal stage. Yes. And where do you actually feel now, Andy? Uh, we're t talking about 1990, year of culture. It's not really changed, has it, at all? <laughs> uh, oh, it's changed a lot, yeah. They've, they've actually gr trying to grind the workers into the ground. It's... Uh, we, we've started up a group, but Worker City, no culture city, and uh, they're totally sort of a, a decimated class. You walk along the Gallagate there, it used to be a hive of activity. You, know, you, don't, you, you can walk for maybe two miles and not meet another person in the middle of the day. It's unbelievable. Okay, then, Andy, thank you very much. Best of luck. And here we have Marie Murphy, the, the final one to be interviewed for the Hunger Strikers. Well, Marie, give us your point of view from yesterday afternoon. Well, what, what do you mean from what happened? Or yeah, how, how did you actually go about setting it up and well, how you coming on? All right, well, we all came down just yesterday morning and set up things like this and put our tents and everything up. Um, got our water supply and everything like that ready. Um, I just started giving out leaflets about um, benefits being arrested and things like that. So what age are you, Mary? Sorry? What age are you? 21. 21. 21. So how does this go then with the, the poll tax burden upon yourself? Um, well, I'm, not really re I'm not registered for the poll tax. Right, fair so enough. They don't know like, that I'm here, so I haven't been getting anything from them. But if I was, then I would probably have... I'm unemployed, so I'd probably have to pay... Um, they would probably get an 80% rebate, I think. I don't actually know. So with you being the young 21 and uh, actually on the dole, how do you survive week to week? Um, with difficulty. I mean, I'm on unemployment benefit, um, so I get about £75 a fortnight to keep me. And I have to give, like, my mum 20 quid a week for keep money. So are you actually on fluids also? Yeah. And do you think you'll reach out to next Wednesday? Yep. <laughs> Ho hopefully it'll be a successful march. Yeah, definitely. Even if I have to get carried up. <laughs> okay.
way there we wave the older ships. <laughs> hey Marie, thank you. Oh, I'm you no, you're not. Have you think you're out your nose? Who are you? Alice. 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 And now here we're speaking to Mr Sheridan's mother, Alice Sheridan. Well, Alice, could you tell us uh, what part you take in the, the campaign for the anti-poll tax? Every part I can, um, from attending my local anti-poll tax um, organisation, which is in Govan at the moment, uh, from knocking doors, leafleting, from standing at street corners, uh, shouting the word if you like, um, taking loudspeakers around streets, being involved in all the campaigns that I possibly can. That's great. And uh, what about uh, Strathclyde House, the powers that be? What about them? Have you been, have you been in the building yet? On a number of occasions, yes, yes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think it's, I think it's criminal that people who are elected to represent working class people and the interests of working class people are not part of this fight and are actually involved in collecting this iniquitous poll tax. Well, Alice, do you think the actual the working class people will actually make a stand against the powers that be now? Is it not about time that us working class people will actually make their stand now? Working class people have been making their stand here in Scotland against the poll tax for over two years. We have a magnificent movement. It started from a, a meeting in Pollock just over two years ago uh, to spread throughout Glasgow, then became the Strathclyde anti poll tax federation. It then became the All Scotland Anti-Poll Tax Federation and that has now spread to the magnificent All Britain Anti-Poll Tax Federation which is made up of local anti-poll tax unions, organisations, community councils, tenants associations all joining together and it's a very democratic organisation where all the um, office bearers, if you like, of the anti-poll tax, the chairman, the secretary, treasurers, whatever, are all elected officials. So it is a grassroots movement. Um, we have lots of support from uh, grassroots trade unionists. It's again a very sad, sad fact that we have not had the official backing of the leaders of the leadership, uh, of Labour uh, leadership, you know, but then uh, people sometimes forget why they've been elected and what they've been elected to do. Well, Alice, the best of luck. The best of luck to all the, the protest strikers also, and we'll be here daily to keep up with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the you we're on a hunger strike now, we're not allowed to take water. Water? We've been round interviewing most of the protesters and uh, got quite a lot of good views on actually the poll tax. So uh, Saturday there's a sculpture coming then and uh, what benefit will actually do your campaign, the protest? I think the, the first benefit of the sculpture coming on Saturday is going to be immediate um, for all the protesters here because, you know, what we've got is effectively a, a donation for a while um, to show that, yet again, we're not on our own, that there's people everywhere who are against the poll tax, against the system in general, against Thatcher. And uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's a brilliant depiction of what the poll tax actually means, the despair that you see in the face there of the sculpture is the type of despair that you see in the faces of people in Easterhus and Pollock and, and Drumchapel and, and the like. And therefore, the immediate effect of this is to let the protesters know they're not alone. So it'll be a, a boost to their spirits and a boost to their morale, and that, that's tremendous. The other effect and benefit we'll get is that people, the public in general, will be able to see this, and, and, and they'll be able to feel inspired by that type of depiction of what the poll tax is all about. And from that point of view, it'll help the campaign uh, get more people thinking just exactly what the poll tax is about, how unfair, unjust and immoral it is 
and uh, therefore hopefully get involved in the campaign against it. So we're really pleased that we're going to get this uh, to display from Saturday onwards. And uh, when you go into your match next Wednesday, we actually maybe have a, a sculpture in front of a match or will you be using it for anything like that? Well, we'll have to work out some of the mechanics of that. I mean, I don't know how heavy it is. I've heard it takes four or five bodies to carry and all that type of stuff. If that is the case, then what we'd need to arrange is some type of a van or a car or something to, to, to carry it in, in front of the, 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 the protesters. Um, if we can carry it, then we'll use it whenever we can. Big public rallies, big public marches and all the rest of it in the future, uh, if John is, is, is willing to allow us to do that. So, I mean, effectively, we're hoping to continue to keep making use of this uh, sculpture as a sign of inspiration, you know. What about a uh, horse and cart? Well, we haven't even thought of horse and cart, actually. Um, it's a, a novel idea. We've never, ever had a horse and cart leading our demonstrations. we we'll maybe look into that. We, what we would really need to have is uh, somebody who's sympathetic enough to sort of donate the horse and cart because we, we probably couldn't afford to, to hire it because it's a campaign of working class people. We don't have any big backers, any we have loads of money around like No, no, we're not gonna let them snub us. So we're, we're no match. We're gonna we're gonna have a rally here about about half an hour's time. Now uh, once once we can all walk again. <laughs> okay, no problem. All right. Oh, jeez, oh, beautiful. That was a pretty good decision. <laughs> pretty good decision. Extremely wise. I think Hoffman should make it anyway. So where you going, Dave? You going to run about the square then? Oh, Dave's just gone up in that trailer. It's been brought. You know they sent us your cakes and all that, eh? Friday's. We'll just be, we'll just be having a wee rally here, by the way. The, reg the region's not going to let us we'll in, so. Just give a couple of cops here, then. Okay. Do, okay. We'll call off the. Uh, well, we've got the traffic wardens and all the points, well, so you're not marching. No. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Right. I hope you feel better after your soup. Anyway. So, so do we. Much. And uh, you'll get a good night's sleep tonight. Yeah. Put it on West Germany. Just a disco. Time to yeah. for more soup. I only, we'll only right. get a good night's sleep if West Germany go up England, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know who you're talking about. Okay, carry on. Yeah. Magic, mate. Yeah, if you're running a pair. Sip, sip, sip. That's bad. Zip up. Sorry, Polly. Right over. Oh. I'll do, I'll do. I'm doing. How's the spirits among you all, are you? Aye. Aye. <coughs> But if we're going down when Cameroon was winning. This fund is up, you know. I spent the last money, I don't know where we're anybody doing me. Oh, I know. Uh, I got in touch with the mm. Times, they said they were covering it. <coughs> the Times over there. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm not. <laughs> I've not been here all week, you know, so the only people that have covered it's the Times. What about that guy who was here the other day? He's a bit of red alcohol, eh? Dave King, is it? Dave King, he's for the record. I mean, the record sent a journalist and a photographer that day. First of all, it's a bit disgraceful, you know, but we've collected just about 14,000 signatures now. Amazing. Brilliant. So how do you actually feel now after the, the, the full week? Well, I think we you know, hopefully we'll be talking for nearly everybody when we say that we've been inspired by the support we've got. We've certainly all had physical effects of the, the hunger strike, which haven't been pleasant. But that uh, the support for the people of Glasgow and Strathclyde has just been tremendous and it's kept us going. 
we were talking the other night about how our bodies might be weak, but our spirits are strong because of the inspiration we've received from uh, from the people. And I mean, we've got over about 14,000 signatures there now, collected something like 1,500 quid. I mean, that's an indication of the support, and uh, we've highlighted a scandal here. We've highlighted the fact that benefit deductions are taking place. Despite the TV and radio blackout, we've still managed to highlight it, you know. So I think we're all glad that we did it and uh, pleased that uh, we've achieved something at least, you know. The only problem is the regional councils refuse to meet us. They've uh, told us they're locking the doors, they're snubbing us, they're not letting us in. So we're not going to give them the pleasure of marching down there so they can slam the door in our faces. We're just having a rally here and we'll be taking our uh, umbrage against them. In, in, in some weeks to come, when they have their uh, next council meeting, you know. So the actual snub for the orders for Charles Gray then? Aye. I mean, Charlie Gray's not even at the meeting and yet he's passed on the orders, you know. We, we heard he's out the country somewhere, I don't know where. Probably in holiday somewhere, but uh, that doesn't matter. We've, we've embarrassed them here, even though they might not admit it. We've Sing embarrassed them. So I'm saying he's done. You're quite convinced that he's been stuck successful in here. Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt. I don't think there's any doubt of that that we've uh, we've been successful in what we've set out to do here. Um, in, in the first instance, which was to highlight the scandal of these deductions, and we've done that. Have you had anybody for the city chambers? Nothing about at all. We've actually had. Two different district councillors who have come down and done 24 hours here, you know, Glasgow Labour district councillors have come down and slept in the tents, as well as Pat Kane and as well as George Galloway MP. So we've had a, some support for the, the Labour movement, if you like. Not enough, not enough, but we've had some support, you know. Um, but as I say, the biggest support we've had is for the punters. The punters have given us marvellous support, and that's, that's the main thing. What about like, say, the presence of Mr Galloway? How did that go? It went well, I mean, people were pleased to see him, pleased to see a Labour MP, unlike the majority of the Labour MPs, somebody who was prepared to stand up and say, this is wrong, this is unjust and I'm going to do something about it, rather than the majority who are scurrying about, looking for excuses to hide, hoisting the white flag with the first sniff of gunshot, you know. People like him, I mean, he made the point that he would rather stand beside us than hoist the white flag with, with John Maxton, you know, so... Aye, we're well, glad to see him, and we've, had, we've, got a, we've got a letter in there for Parliament being sent to the hunger protesters, George Square, Glasgow, and it got delivered here to Dave Nellis, the MP, down in Parliament. But all we, that gave us a real boost as well, the fact that people down there know what's going on, and you know they, they've moved motions at Parliament and all that, so it's good, very good. So, what time are you going to actually kick off then? We'll have a rally here, about half past 11, we'll have a rally here. Have a few speeches, let everybody say a few words, you know. So um, you can hopefully get some wee shots of that if you've got the time in it. So how, how you cope to after the week? Fine, fine. Do you think the, the heart of Glasgow is going out to you? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's been heartwarming, the support that we've had. Absolutely brilliant, you know. Brilliant. People from all walks of life, you know, right across the spectrum have been coming up. Yeah, I'll get I'll get up for Can you. I get a picture of no problem. Those and we'll do it with the tenants as a No problem, I'll go and get it. I'll go and get the petitions. The, 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 the other nine there, you know, maybe get you with them. Well, I want to go. Ah, well, you'll try it. No fun on that.
Shakers. Yeah, it's short, John. This is nine of the hung hunger strikers. And this is the press and I want a photograph from them. Say the heart of Glasgow. This is now the heart of Glasgow. This is our people fighting for our rights. Okay, that's it. Smash it, great. This is the petitions with all the signatures. I believe they have now over 12,500 signatures and raised £1,500. Okay, Is there more than a photo getting taken? Believe me. Good, that's nothing, yeah. Don't do that to me. <coughs> we just get another sit down one with you with some of the things and I'll just get a shot of it. Okay, if you did exactly as you did before, if you can hand out some of the petitions. Alright, I'm going to take a. Now the symbol of the pole tax is now lifted onto the trailer. Now we have the hunger protesters ready to do the rally, along with the symbol the burden of a poll tax, sculptured by Mr John Steele of Special Unit Berlin.
Holly, see your t shirt. <laughs> no, I think we'll have a complete hunger strike as well. support. 
Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, this is the last thing I want to say. Unfortunately, what we have faced over the last seven days is the most disgraceful, the most disgusting and biased TV and radio blackout from the land in Strathclyde. Isn't it a pity, brothers and sisters, that if we had hitched a lift to China, to Tiananmen Square, we would have had more chance of getting on the BBC and STV than we have having it in Georgie Square. It shows you who's pulling the strings at the top of the tree as far as these organisations are concerned. I'll thank you, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to call on a representative of the Strathclyde Fire Brigade Union who have supported this hunger strike over the last seven days to say a few words. Thanks very much, folks. Member of the Fire Brigade Union, Labour Party member, and a staunch supporter of the working class people that you have seen here today who have not turned their back on the poorest sections of our society. I can tell you this, brothers and sisters, we have phoned round the hierarchy of the trade union movement here in Strathclyde. I do not see the barriers of the working class people who are supposed to be represented, represented by that hierarchy, except for one or two. I can tell you this, brothers and sisters, I have been threatened on many occasions because of our stance and my own particular stance on non-payment. I am proud to stand by those people who have put our party in power not very far away from here. And I can tell you this, I would rather stand by these people, our people, than seek sanctuary inside that gilded cage of Labour Party New Realism. Those are sisters, one of the, one of the heartening things over the, uh, the week is we have managed to have a couple, and it's only a couple, unfortunately, of councillors who have come out of the chambers there and decided to, in solidarity with the strikers, take a 24-hour stint on the hunger strike and live in the tent. One of those councillors is Councillor Larry Flanagan from Casimal. Yeah. I'd like you to listen to him. Yeah. Thanks very much, Tony. Well, could I first of all congratulate all those who've been on the hunger protest for the seven days because having just done 24 hours, I think their determination and their stamina is something that should be recognised. I think we owe them a, a debt of gratitude for being able to persevere for the full seven days and make a very worthwhile protest on behalf of those who are having their benefits arrested. So can we congratulate those who have been on this protest for the seven days, please? I think it's all we said, it's also an absolute disgrace. It's managed to go into that chamber to find a way around George Square so they can slip in a side door or a back door rather than coming face to face with the reality of this protest. And it's to their eternal shame, and it's to their eternal shame of every Labour councillor on Strathclyde Region that they have ignored this protest and they've ignored the message of the protest and are now proceeding down the, down the road of benefit arrestments and warrant sales. These people do not deserve the title of Labour councillor because they are betraying everything that the Labour movement represents. They are betraying the people of Glasgow and taking that away. And I'm frankly ashamed to be associated with people who are prepared to take that kind of stance. And I think it's up to the people and the rank and file of the anti poll tax federations to get the message across that that kind of behaviour will not be tolerated and will not be forgiven and will not be forgotten. We have built a strength in the anti poll tax federation. We have built a strength in the communities and the local tenants groups, the local community groups that cannot be ignored forever by these people. If we rely upon our own strength, because that's what we're going to have to do, if we rely upon our own strength, then we will persevere against Thatcher and against the Thatcherites who are in Labour councils at the moment. If we have confidence, we'll go into victory. I think the demonstration this week, the tens of thousands of signatures from the ordinary people of Glasgow are an indication of the real strength of this campaign. So although we haven't persuaded the regional council today, let's not dismay. We will persuade them in the future and relying upon our own strength, we will go on 
to, to victory against the poll tax and against Thatcherism. Thanks very much. Brothers and sisters, we've, uh, I've asked any of the other hunger strikers if they wanted to say a few words. They're quite happy to think all the, all the main points have been made. They probably feel the idea that uh, you're about to collapse anyway, and you're only getting kept going with nervous energy. But what we're going to have um, to sort of a try and round things up is a wee song. It's a song that's been specially written. Before that song's sung, however, and I hope everybody will try and listen to it, we want to give a special thanks to people who are always working behind the scenes, but they don't ever get the credit that they're due. And that is the Clyde Side Press, the printers who are running High Street, who do all our posters, who do all our bullets, who do all our leaflets. Even though we're hundreds of pounds in debt to Clyde Side Press, they still keep churning out the stuff. And they're showing their commitment to this campaign by the sacrifice of the labour and by the sacrifice of the hours they put in to make sure this campaign's run. I'd like everybody to thank Clyde Side Press for coming on your side over there. Excuse me, there's arthritis and all that trying to get up there, right? This is a wee song that I drew together in a few minutes on Saturday night. I was so incensed at the media refusal to report on this hunger strike. So, just listen to the words. I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter. Beat myself a letter. That surely grace sent out today. He said, I'm sorry, working class. I haven't fought your vile poll tax. I've sold you down the river. Cause I was scared down to my liver. I had to smile when Charlie said to me, I'm sorry. Cause you proved that you're not cowards too. Your anti poll tax Federation has weakened a bit nation. Please let me join and be a hero too. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, the, the concluding remarks I'd want to make is this, brothers and sisters. What we have to do is to continue this campaign. I would ask every single one of you, if you're not yet involved in your local anti-poll tax union, get involved in your local anti-poll tax union. Form your street committees. Get your phone trees together and make sure that when these sheriff officers come anywhere near the streets of our housing schemes. They are faced with physical blockades of human solidarity standing together and saying to the sheriffs, to the region and to Thatcher, we have had enough. We will not let you pass. We will not let these warrant shelves take place. Please, brothers and sisters, go back to your housing schemes, go back to your workplaces, go back to the colleges, and build, build, build this campaign in order that we can secure the greatest victory that working class people in Scotland have ever secured. Thanks very much, brothers and sisters, for coming. Thanks very much, folks, for coming. Please, if you haven't signed any petitions, the petition's still there. And if any of you can afford to make a donation, please still make a donation. Thanks very much, folks.